Buried inside of a new foreign affairs article is an absolutely stunning revelation. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. So those of you who might not be familiar, Fiona Hill is a former Russia staffer on the National Security Council, reveals exclusively in a new piece that Russia and Ukraine agreed to a tentative settlement in April that would have halted the war. But as Branko Marsetti points out, what ends up happening instead is that the UK Prime Minister, you guys will recall, Boris Johnson, flew over to Kiev to instantly say, this is off the table. So here's what the direct quote. According to multiple Russian uh, former senior US officials we spoke with, in April 2022, Russian and Ukrainian negotiators appear to have attentively agreed on the outlines of a negotiated interim settlement. Russia would withdraw to its position on February 23 when it controlled part of the Donbass and all of Crimea, and in exchange, Ukraine would promise not to seek NATO membership and instead receive security guarantees from a number of countries. Remember, those very, very, very early days of the war, we thought that that was a very distinct possibility. They were sitting down in Istanbul. They were sitting down also, you know, in some of the contested regions, even during the actual invasion and push on Kyiv. Then it all falls apart. Billions of dollars of U.S. weapons and, U uh, well, some billions, not as many billions, from the U.K. And then a paltry, tiny little sums start to flow in from France and everybody else. But the Anglo countries, Britain and the U.S., make it clear, we don't want you to sign a deal. Right. Zelensky sees that his real money train and political, by political necessity, the Ukrainian population wanted to fight. And then the popular, the uh, foreign countries are like, no, we don't want you to give in at all. We want to keep the war going or we want to stand up. Our own populations are now, you know, aghast or whatever. Nobody can just settle this thing. And here we are. And to be I frank, you know, as where the battle line stands right now, this is basically exactly what's happened, except now a hell of a lot of people had to die for the Dunbas region, yeah. and now Dunbas is gone. And look, we'll see if that southern offensive by the Ukrainians amounts to anything. Personally, I have my doubts. This is, yeah. I mean, it really is a bombshell. And right. you lay on an important piece too, which yes, we know it was UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson who made the trip specifically. This was according to reports in the uh, Kyiv press and the Ukrainian right. press, specifically to say, we do not want you to settle. We are not ready for this war mm -hmm. to end. But we know that the U.S. and the U.K. have been in close alignment on uh, our policy towards Ukraine. France and Germany were taking more of an approach of let's have talks, let's yep. have diplomacy, especially Macron was on the phone with um, Putin all the time, trying to keep them in dialogue and keep them in conversation. At this point, also remember what happened is Russia was sort of bogged down. Things hadn't gone well for them. All the you know, analysts were sort of wrong about how quickly this was going to all occur. The Ukrainians were doing much better than expected. So this was a key moment when if there was going to be a deal, this was it. And now you have Zelensky much more consistent in the press with like, we're going to you know, achieve our maximum, so we're going to take back Crimea, we're going to take back every mm -hmm. square inch of territory. At the time, there were sort of mixed messages coming out, both from Kyiv and also from the Russian side. So this is an astounding uh, failure. It's an astounding loss. It is incredibly um, cruel to the Ukrainian people to have you know, scuttled this deal and forced them to, into the, to, to continue this war, um, which has been horrific for them. Now you have Europeans who are, we were just looking, I mean, they're facing a dire situation in terms of um, gas price, energy prices going into this winter, chaos around the globe. I mean, in my view, scuttling this deal is a world historic error and disaster from a human perspective. Yeah. So um, really key detail here and also, Great commentary and, you know, really noteworthy that this gets mentioned, like, not at all, like, barely noticed yeah, in the mainstream in the press. press. This is one of those things, I'm going to read about that in a history book in 20 years. Yes. We'll finally get all the details, and it'll be kind of like reading about the telegrams in World War One, which you don't get to read them until, like, 25 years later. Yeah. So that's what's going to happen, and uh, by that time, we'll all learn how it worked out. And I'm going to venture to say that probably is going to be better than whatever ultimately the real, you know, negotiated settlement. Whenever this ends, looks like. after much and hardship. A lot, yeah, and a lot of other people will be dead, yeah. unfortunately, for that reason. So be it. We'll see you guys later. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. 
That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.